morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Cory Church of Faith this morning, and so glad that you are here. I want to give a welcome to all those who are joining us on our online feed this morning. Hope you are blessed by your time here with us. I uh, just have some announcements I'd like to share with you. First of all, uh, as you know, this is Super Bowl Sunday, and we've also done a Super S-U-P-E-R Bowl collection. As you can see, you've all been extremely generous, uh, as uh, was a pleasant view. And so uh, the Bluffton Food Pantry, where this is all going to be going uh, this week, is going to really appreciate. I, I appreciate all of you who donate. This is wonderful. Uh, it will mean a lot to the people that receive it. Uh, if you didn't get a chance, if you want to bring, if you still want to bring some at 1.30 today at the meeting, which we'll talk about in a second, or get it into the office by Tuesday, uh, we can see that it gets added to the bunch. But this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I mentioned the meeting today at 1.30, right here in this sanctuary. It's a joint meeting uh, with ourselves and Pleasant View coming over. Uh, we will be having an informational meeting led by um, Richard Hildebrand from Good Shepherd in uh, Benton Ridge, who is uh, a representative on behalf of uh, Global Methodist Church to give us information about that, to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, some of you may have uh, questions. Um, and um, this is not a vote. This is not any, no, no vote's going to be taken. Other. It's simply to give information out. We'll have further meetings uh, after this about that. Now, this coming week, we have a lot, a lot going on. Um, in addition today, on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And uh, as a part of that, you can actually, if you want to receive ashes, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, first of all, for those of you who live in or around Bluffton, uh, from 7 to 9 in the morning, uh, there's an Ashes to Go uh, event going on down right on the main street on the sidewalk in front of the gazebo by the Presbyterian Church there. Uh, so you can either drive up and get out or just drive up and somebody will come to the car and they'll uh, pray with you a second and give you ashes and you can be on your way. Or uh, if you don't like the morning session, in the evening from 6 to 7.30, uh, this sanctuary will be open. Uh, and uh, you can come in and go as, as you please. Uh, and come in and, and have a time of prayer. Uh, we'll pray with you, uh, give ashes on the forehead or the hand, whichever you prefer, and you can stay as long or as short as you can. Uh, but So you have two opportunities on Wednesday uh, to get marked. And so, and, uh, and that's in addition to get your red rose because it's Valentine's Day too, which leads us to the next thing. On the next day, on Thursday evening, the 15th, is when Melody Circle is having their annual Valentine's dinner. It's open to anybody in either church, whether you're married or not. Uh, so uh, if you wish to go, it's at the lunchbox in um, Pandora. Uh, you don't have to buy anything ahead of time. You just pay there. It's, I think it's $14 a plate. Uh, and um, uh, the sign-up sheet is on the soundboard by Gary there. Today's the last day to sign up because they need to have numbers, obviously. So uh, if you are interested in going, please sign up there. And it uh, be uh, wonderful to have you on Thursday evening. Uh, and then next Sunday already is Lent, the start of uh, the first Sunday of Lent. And so next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock is the first of our uh, annual uh, Sunday evening Lenten services. It rotates around from the churches. And next Sunday evening, it'll be at Mount Zion East which is uh, out uh, East Sandusky Street and on County Road 7 on the east side of Finley. And they, they've been added uh, this year because their pastor right now is Lynn Otis, who lives up here in 313, who spoke here before for me. And uh, so uh, they've uh, asked to join in. Richard Hildebrand will be speaking at that one. Uh, we're hosting here on the 3rd of March, and then I'll be speaking at uh, Ross and New Hope on the following Sunday on the 10th. The schedule's in the insert on your bulletin. Uh, so you have an insert on your bulletin that has to do with the Lenten Sunday evening schedule, the Ash Wednesday, and then the next is the Lenten Bible study, which we've chosen this year. A Savior looks at Psalm 23. And so uh, these books are available. I have some here. If you want to pick one up on the front pew after service, uh, you can just pick one up and, and take. just let me know you have it. Um, uh, and there are more out at the office. I just brought a few up. Uh, but feel free to take them. We're going to be meeting each Wednesday night uh, starting the 20th of, uh, let's see, 21st. 
of February down at Bethel Family Life Center at 7 o'clock. For those of you who are online or are here who would like to participate but don't want to come in person, there is a way for you to uh, call in uh, and, uh, and you, it would just be, it would not be video, it would just be uh, voice, but you could hear us and we could hear you. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know and we can get you that number. Uh, so you can pick one of those up. Also, in front of the, um, uh, opposite the restroom out here in the hallway, we put up a few weeks ago, a, uh, uh, or a few months ago, I should say, uh, a little holder that has different uh, pamphlets in that you can free, come feel free to pick up and take. And we said we'd rotate some from time to time. And we just uh, put in uh, right now these little pamphlets called Steps to Peace with God. So if you're interested in one of those, feel free to pick one of those up out there. Um, for those of you who either would like to attend a grief share session uh, or uh, I have had have attended in the past and want to again. Uh, they're starting up again. It's a 13 week video small group course. Uh, I know Phyllis has been at a number of them, and uh, I think we've had a couple people from our church who have. Uh, but they are starting up at uh, on Wednesday the 21st, same night as or same day as our Bible study. But you can go either at 10 in the morning. Or you can go at 6.30 at night. Some people like the morning sessions. Some people like the evening sessions at 6.30. Uh, and that runs 13 weeks. Uh, and that's at St. Mark's in Findlay. And so that's uh, a good thing. Uh, we are also continuing to collect cards, uh, food cards and gas cards for uh, Connor Sons. And I'll be telling you a little bit more about his situation here in a little bit. Um, and you've been very generous thus far. Uh, but if you have ones that you still want to get to me, uh, just uh, bring it to me or bring it to the office. And the final announcement of things coming up, as you know, uh, Christian Clearinghouse has their garage sale every spring. Starting on Monday, the, se the 19th of February, so a week from tomorrow, uh, they will be open every day, uh, weekday until 4, and Saturdays, I think, till noon or 1, uh, and for drop-offs. If you have things you want to donate to sell to get rid of things. Uh, hopefully not your trash, but, uh, but the things that you want to get rid of to sell, uh, you can drop them off anytime during, uh, I think it's 8 to 4 on weekdays and 8 to noon on Saturdays. Uh, there's an actual poster on the bulletin board down there. You can double check. Uh, but So drop-offs are starting already, so uh, feel free to take advantage of that. Um, one other thing I did see. Um, they're not here this morning, but I wanted to congratulate Nathaniel Gregorowitz. He earned a uh, superior in his uh, percussion ensemble uh, at uh, competition here uh, recently. He also earned an individual uh, superior for his solo on the snare drum. And Mackenzie Welch had a superior or an excellent for her vocal solo. So congratulations to, to Kenzie and, and to Nate uh, for their accomplishments there. Birthdays. Mike Routon has one. He actually had one uh, on Friday. And coming up on uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, the 12th, uh, Marilyn Weimer, um, Brian Gregorowitz, and my mother, Mary Ellen Jacobs, having a birthday. All of them tomorrow. I didn't say her age. <laughs> I could understand that if I blurted out how old, but, but, uh, but as you, many of you know, I just had a granddaughter uh, on the 3rd of February, um, Miss Charlotte, I got to meet last Friday. Um, so she, her birthday's the 3rd, my mom's is the 12th, my sister, uh, Becky, is on the third, Tuesday the 13th, as is my grandson, who's going to be four, Richie, on Tuesday, and my dad's is the 20th. and. Uh, Vernon, and uh, I am in August. So I don't know what it says more about them or me for being that way, but February is a busy month. Throw in Valentine's Day and you take it out alone at the beginning of the month. Anyway, I think that's all the announcements. Otherwise, we'll have to cut the sermon short, won't we? Yeah. Oh, she's going, yes, yes. 
Um, there is another sign-up sheet on the um, sound cabinet to help us out with the refreshments that we're preparing for the March 3rd Sunday evening service. Oh, yeah. So if you could take a look at that on your way out and sign up if you're able. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? Here well, Lana, will you prepare hearts and minds for worship? Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up onto a high mountain to pray. There he was transfigured before them. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. It shone like the sun, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning, dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And just then appeared in glorious splendor before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Let's worship God with thanks and praise and let us pray. Holy One, light of light, God of all creation, long ago you showed yourself to the disciples in Jesus' transfiguration, his face glowing with your glory. As we gather together this morning in this place, we pray that we will feel the precious warmth of your Holy Spirit. Shine your light in us, around us, and through us that the world may see your glory in the faces of your people, faces transfigured in the light of your love. Let others see in us the hope, the joy, and the love that we receive from you. As we prepare for worship, God, bring us to the mountaintop so that we may be inspired to do your work in the valley below. In the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Will you join us in our first hymn uh, today? It's Trust and Obey. It can be found on the screen or on page 467 of your hymnals. Please rise in body or spirit. When we walk with the Lord in the light of word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no 
with majesty on page 176 or on the screen and we'll sing this through twice. You may be seated. Come time in our worship service where we are taking our joys and concerns to the Lord. I have uh, several that I want to share with you. Um, the first, obviously, is a joy. I got to meet Miss Charlotte on Friday, so that was that was nice. 
Um, also, um, want to continue to lift up Jim Motter, uh, who's Sue and Gary's brother-in-law. Um, I understand he is doing better. He's home uh, and uh, recuperating. He still has uh, some recuperating to do, but at least he's home and he's uh, done that well. So that's a good thing. Um, also, uh, want to uh, lift up Harold and Tammy Parkins. Um, in addition to all the other things that they had going on, uh, Tammy uh, and Harold got the flu. <laughs> so, uh, so that's uh, not anything they needed uh, and anything else. But uh, just uh, continue to lift them up in prayer um, is, uh, during this time. Also, um, I told you I'd give you an update on Connor Sons. Uh, he has uh, improved to the point where he was released from Nationwide, he's home. Uh, he actually uh, did well enough uh, that he uh, attended school for, I think, a half a day this week. And uh, so he'll build on that as his strength uh, improves. Uh, but uh, that's a good step uh, given where he's at. Now, sports, uh, I understand, are not going to be in his future any longer, uh, which he was very active in that. And he's gonna have to be on some medications for the rest of his life. Um, but given where he was at, uh, taking the, some medications, I know what that's all about. So um, uh, that's a good thing. And I did hear uh, his uh, great aunt Jill uh, told me this morning that um, to help get him uh, involved, one of the coaches uh, offered to have him come along and be kind of an assistant coach uh, for one of the teams at Corey Ross. And so. He may not get to play, but he can still be involved in sports in some way. So that's a, that's a blessing. Um, then later this month, he will have to go back down for some treatments, radiation treatments on the what's left of the tumor that they had. But he's come a long way. Are there others that you would like to share this morning? Don't want to leave anybody out. Very good. And will you join us in our prayer hymn this morning in the garden on page 314? And you may remain seated as we sing this. Oh, boy. 
Father God, giver, giver of light and life, we give you praise and thanks for your grace and mercy that you extend to each one of us. Father, you've blessed us with life. You've blessed us with experiences with others. And you bless us in so many ways that we fail too often to acknowledge or give you thanks. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for our failure to be grateful in all things. And we ask for your forgiveness and we know that that forgiveness is freely given because of your great love, because you sent your son Jesus to be with us. We know that we can take our joys and concerns to you and we certainly give you praise for the gift of new life that helps us remember that is one life goes on to be with you and other life comes into this world and we should be grateful. Lord, we thank you for your healing power, and we ask your continued touch on Harold and Tammy and Jim and Connor. We thank you for the healing that you have done in them thus far and ask that you continue to do so. Be with Connor uh, both physically and emotionally and spiritually and be with his family as they continue to support him in this journey. Father, we have many people in our bulletin that we've prayed for for some time, and we continue to lift them up to you and entrust them to your care. We also know that there are unspoken requests on the hearts of those here in the congregation and those who are watching online, and we'll take a moment right now to lift those up to you as well. Father God, I thank you for the generousness of your people here at Mount Cory who gave of themselves and gave of uh, these cans of soup uh, to be a blessing to others. I just ask, Lord, that it be a blessing for each one of them, that all those who receive uh, this gift of food would be uh, blessed, that they would feel your love and that know that there are those out there that do care about them even in their difficult circumstances. Lord, as we came in, we put our tithes and offerings in the basket out of the bounty that you've given to us. All that we have is yours and we give you back the portion that we have offered. And Lord, we just ask you to bless that offering. Be with those who gave it and bless them. Help us to use it in a way that furthers the spreading of the good news of your gospel in Jesus Christ to all that we come in contact with. And it is that good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we give you the most thanks for. That you sent him while we were still sinners. That he showed us how to live and he died for us and he rose again so that we may have the hope of eternal life with you. We are so grateful. And it is in the name of that Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we don't have any children here today, but I'm going to give you the children's moment anyway. Obviously, Wednesday is the uh, uh, Ash Wednesday. It has much meaning in the church. It reminds us of our own mortality and our need for, for Christ. But it also happens to be this year, Valentine's Day, a day when we express our love to each other. Uh, our feelings for each other. And it can be between sweethearts, it can be between husbands and wives, it can be parents and child, it can be whoever. It's a day that we can express our love to each other. And from the very earliest days in school, there was always a symbol that we used to express that love. 
And it was a heart. And we put it on our emails and we put it on our Facebook posts and we put it on Valentine's cards and send them in the mail. And all of them, when anybody sees that symbol, everybody knows what that means. There's love being extended when we see that symbol. Well, there's nobody that loves us more than God. He loves us deeply. And it's not just on one day, Valentine's Day. It's all year long. And he also has a symbol, a different one, but one just as powerful, if not more so, because the symbol of his love is a cross. And what happened on that cross and the love that it took for that to be done is the greatest gift of love any of us could ever receive on Valentine's Day or any day. Let's pray. Father God, help us to always remember the gift of love that you gave. And as we remember that, help us to share that love with others so that others may know that your love extends to them as well. In your precious name we pray. pray. Amen. Nancy? This scripture lesson begins 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 5, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an in eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Then Hebrews chapter 12, verse two to three. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thank you, Nancy. May God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. As you know, as I mentioned earlier, next Sunday is uh, the first Sunday of Lent. And each Sunday uh, during that season, I will be presenting to you a sermon series entitled, Be Real, Meeting Jesus in the Mess of Life. Lent gives us a chance to peel back the layers and get to the heart of what matters most. And this Lenten season, we'll walk these 40 days with Jesus who showed us we don't have to come to God perfectly. God just asks us to show up authentically as our whole selves. And this season is an opportunity to set aside the carefully curated life that we often like to project to the world and instead embrace what's real. We'll meet Jesus in the messiness of our lives and recognize that God is right there with us. So we'll be discussing real faith, 
real life, real presence, real forgiveness, and other aspects of life, and then ultimately culminating on Easter Sunday with real joy. I hope you'll be able to join us over these next eight weeks, and I pray that the messages that you will hear will be meaningful to you and helpful to you as we all try to live out our faith here in the day-to-day of this life. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I've mentioned, uh, today we are concluding our series on preaching the messages of the music of Stephen Curtis Chapman. Uh, And don't forget, uh, as you saw in your newsletters, he's going to be in concert uh, at Versailles, Ohio on Saturday, March 9th. Uh, So if you're interested in going, please let me know. Tickets are going fast. Um, But the two songs that I uh, chose for the basis of the message today includes uh, Don't Lose Heart, which is his most recent and 50th number one single. This is pretty amazing. But these two songs work together as a closing argument about Christian living and is heavily rooted in the writings of the Apostle Paul. And this morning I want to talk to you about what our ultimate goal should be and discuss the journey in getting there. So today, as everybody knows, is Super Bowl Sunday. It's the culmination of the NFL season, but the goal was set clear back last summer when coaches and players reported to training camp, each with the same goal, to win a championship and hold up the Vince Lombardi Trophy as their reward. Then came practices and two-a-days and training and exhibition games, 16 regular season games, Some played in very inhospitable conditions. Teams experienced ups and downs, exhilarating victories, devastating defeats. Players experienced bumps and bruises and injuries that would take them out of at least one game and some for a season. The season is a mental as well as a physical gauntlet. Over the half the teams came up so far short that they didn't even make the playoffs. And some were so far out of reaching that ultimate goal weeks ahead of time before the season was over that on occasion teams will turn on each other or just give up. Still others will dig deep and play out with pride and determination. But it is very tempting for some of the teams at the very bottom of the standings to lose sight of the fact that they may be developing players that over time as they gain experience and skills may prove to be of great assets and with the future trades and drafts and adding pieces to what they have that they will bear fruit in future seasons. But in the midst of the current season, They focus solely on those difficulties. It's very tempting to just give up. Now, speaking of pigskins, that leads me to talking about pigs. Three pigs, to be exact. Three little pigs, actually. Maybe you've heard something about them. They had a goal to construct a house to shelter them from the storms and to keep them safe from a wolf, a big bad wolf, to be exact, and who sought to devour them. Now, neither the first home made of straw or the second home house made of wood met that goal, and those efforts failed. So did those two pigs who built those houses allow this failure to just consume them right along with the the wolf itself? No. They persevered, and when the third house made of brick was found to be a more permanent structure that would not fail and would keep them safe, they knew that they had made it home. 
The Apostle Paul, in many of his writings, talks about the struggles of life, often in the context of athletic events, such as running a race. For Paul and for us as Christians, what is our goal? What is our finish line? Where is our finish line? Ultimately, it is to arrive at our permanent home and spend eternity in heaven with God and our Savior. The life we live in the court in the is the course that we must follow to get there. And some of our journeys are long, and some are from our perspective tragically short. Some may be smoother than others, but each course has its own twists and turns, trials and travails, triumphs and tragedies. And Paul faced great sufferings, trials, and distress during his ministry. And Jesus even told us that this road would not be easy. In John 16, 33, he told us that in this world you will have trouble. Not you might have trouble. Not you won't have trouble as long as you do this. You will have trouble. You see, as Christians, we're not insulated or protected from anything bad happening to us. The question becomes how we respond to it. We experience pain or illness, either of ourselves or of a loved one. We experience the intense grief of losing a loved one who meant so much to us. We experience struggle with our finances, struggles with our relationships, especially between a husband and wife or a parent and child. We experience struggles with our jobs, struggles with our mental health and emotional health, struggles with temptations and addictions of all kinds, and we struggle with the consequences of our own bad choices. 2 Corinthians 4.16 talks about our outward bodies, outwardly, our bodies, meaning our bodies, we are wasting away. And in chapter 5, verse 1, that we live in an earthly tent that is subject to destruction. See, none of us will escape this world unscathed and without scars. Maybe you've experienced some of that. The later years of life are often referred to as the golden years. As so many people, including some of you, I must uh, say, have expressed this, the sentiment that I don't feel so golden to me with their aches and pains and sufferings. There was a saying one time that says, uh, when I'm young, I didn't have time to enjoy life. And when I had time to enjoy life, I was too old <laughs> to do so. I don't know that that's very true, but I think some people uh, would share that sentiment. But We've all experienced sleepless nights, praying that hope comes with the morning light, but right now, we're feeling like we've lost this fight, and fear is screaming out our name. And the road can sure be a long and winding one, and sometimes the pain is just so intense, the failure and shame is so overwhelming, that we just feel like giving up just laying down to die because it is easier just to lose heart. And in those times, you can cry out to God and say, help me. And when that help doesn't come in the time or the manner that we think he should, it should, we begin to wonder if he's even listening at all. As Christians, we know he is. We know his ways are higher than our ways. And sometimes the help doesn't come in this lifetime. So how do we face as Christians? How do we adjust uh, to this? How do we traverse this journey of life? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says that so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen, our world here, everything we experience is temporary. But what is unseen, the heavenly realms, is eternal. 
And in Hebrews 12, 2 and 3, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so you don't grow worry, weary or lose heart. See, sometimes we can be so focused on problems, we're oblivious to the things around us. We're oblivious to the bigger picture. All of you have cell phones. You know, people complain, and I know many of you have experienced it. It's the hips and the knees. That's the problem. Well, I'm telling you, in years to come, it's going to be the thumbs and the neck because everybody goes around like this and not even aware of what's going on around them, bumping into people, stepping out in front of things that can hit them or hurt them, completely unaware of the things around us. We can be so single-minded and focused on that that when we focus on our problems, it's hard for us to see the bigger picture. Hard for us to see the light of eternity. Yes, facing the unknown can cause anxiety and fear. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus, our problems don't seem quite as large. The second thing we need to remember is that the afflictions, the pain that we're going through, whatever it is, loneliness or loss or our difficulties in life, whatever, it's all temporary. And God can use it for a purpose. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17, it says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It far outweighs them all. We look at what Jesus had to endure on our behalf. We've not been asked to do anything like that. Are our problems that much bigger than his? If we focus on our problems and focus only on that, we decrease the size of God. Because the thing you need to remember, God is bigger than any problem that you have. He's bigger than any problem that you have. So turn to him. Three, we need to remind ourselves that this is not our home. See, we are in a tent, a house of straw, a house of wood, this body of ours. And the older we get, we realize it doesn't always work the way it used to. And so we know that our human bodies are subject to decay and erosion. But our permanent home is one not built with human hands. 2 Corinthians 5.1, for we know that if this early t earthly tent we live in, this body that we live in is destroyed, and it'll happen to all of us, it will be destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And it is that house that becomes our home. And it keeps us safe. We're no longer subject to all the decay and the sin that infects us in this world. We need to keep reminding ourselves that we're not home. This isn't our home. This is where we're living at the present time. And it's comfortable and we like it and we experience this and this is all we can see. But this is not our home. The life and death that we have only is a prelude to the eternal life with God mentioned earlier about my granddaughter. You try and tell a baby in the womb who's safe and warm and tucked, and that's all they know. And you try and explain to them what life is like out there on the other side. And even if you could tell them, they couldn't understand it. There's no way you have to experience it. And for us, 
we are in this world here and it's comfortable and we like it and there's beauty and there's wonder and there's wonderful things that happen. But there's something else yet after. And if God were to try and tell us all about it and every aspect of it, we could not possibly comprehend until we ourselves experience that. And just as birth is the crossover between the natal care into life on earth, the transition of life on earth and death is just a transition into heaven and eternity. See, we all have a goal to hear the Father say to us, welcome home, my child. We all want to be home. We all want to have a home. And regardless of the condition of the home you grew in or all the strife or turmoil or whatever it was in your past, everybody puts their trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, can have a home, a home for eternity. And that period of time, compared to the zero to maybe 110 or so years that we have, may have on this life, that time here in this world is just a blink of an eye, can't compare. That is why Paul said, and is able to say with confidence, to die is gain. Because he had the assurance that on the other side, there is more. For those who set a goal in life different than to hear the Father say, welcome home. Those who set a goal in life to just, I'm going to live the high life. You only live once. I'm going to live it to the best I can. And when it's over, I'm done. It's fine. Well, even if they're able to experience all the high life that they think they want to have, I think in the end they'll look back, if that's all they've done, they'll look back with a great deal of disappointment and emptiness. And finally, let's not grow weary or too content to stay. Opposite things, really. We can get so content to stay here that we say, oh, it's too hard to go that route. We become new Christians and then we try and solve all these things that are the Holy Spirit's dealing with us on and showing us where we fail and sharing us where we fall short. And then we get discouraged and we say, it's too hard. I'm just going to go back to the life I used to live. We give up so much in doing that. And also on the road, as we go through the difficulties of life, it's so easy to grow weary and tired. The 1 Corinthians 5, 9 tells us that we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home in the body or away from it. Because in that way, and we consider what Jesus has done for us, we will not grow weary or faint. I want to share with you just as I end. Many of you remember back in April of 1999 that there was a mass school shooting in a place called Columbine, High School Columbine in Littleton, Colorado. Everybody, it was a devastating day. Twelve students died, one teacher, 24 others were injured. And we looked around and said, how could this happen? This is the first time it's ever happened in a school like this. Well, not exactly. A year and a half before that, in December of 1997, at Heath High School, in Paducah, Kentucky, there was a shooting where three were killed and five were injured. 
Heath High School in Paducah, Kentucky is where Stephen Curtis Chapman and his brother went to school. And they had a memorial service for those that were lost in the gymnasium and Paducah's not that big a town and everybody was there and Stephen was asked to come and sing. And they had a specific request. They had a specific request that they, they sing. And he asked them to sing Not Home Yet. Not Home Yet. And it was not so much about the ones that were lost. It was for the ones that was left behind. Because the ones who had, were lost had gone on. They are experiencing their rewards. They're seeing the light of heaven. They're experiencing the glory of God. It's us who are left behind that are poor in stature because we're not home yet where they are. Let us remember not to lose heart in anything we face in this life because we're not home yet. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise and assurance that you give us that there is more more to this life. Help us to appreciate every day that we have here. Help us to stay strong and not grow weary and not grow faint and not lose heart, but continue on because we know that what you have in store for us ahead is far better. We'll overshadow shadow all that we've gone on before. So we ask you through the power of the Holy Spirit to help us take another step to go another day to go another month or year until such time as you call us home and welcome us with the words welcome home my child amen as we close our service today, it's appropriate that we sing this next hymn of the church. It's not in your hymnals, it's just on the screen, but it's one that I think you're most familiar with, When We All Get to Heaven. If you are able, please rise in body or spirit as we join together in song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we Sing and shout the victory While we walk the pilgrim pathways Clouds will overspread the sky But when traveling days are over Not a shadow, not a sigh When we all get to heaven What a day sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day that will be when we all see Jesus.
Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Don't, don't forget to go and grab lunch and come back at 1.30. And now until we meet again, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.